Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Hitman. If you enjoy this video, please like, comment and subscribe. No, I'm just kidding. Could you imagine if I seriously said that? If you enjoy this video, please study to become a school teacher and then spend every lesson educating the young leaders of tomorrow about the mighty pelican species, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Today's mission brings us to a luxury hotel resort in Thailand. You know Thailand, the place where old women look like young women and where young men also look like young women. Our two targets are Jordan Cross, who is a rock star and the lead singer for an internationally famous indie band and Ken Morgan who is the lawyer for Jordan and his billionaire father and looks like the kind of guy who pays dudes to sleep with his wife while he sad faps in the corner of the room. For gadgets we will bring with us Agent 47's classic silence pistol but in chrome because I mean why wouldn't you choose the chrome version? And we will also bring with us a fish because look I actually don't know why we are bringing the fish but anyway we've got a fish. So it's time to infiltrate the the resort. As I approach the main staircase, these two ladies bow for me. In all of these Asian hitman locations, I get bowed to and honestly, I'm becoming accustomed to it. The next time I visit a cafe in real life, the waiter better bow for me when they bring me my coffee or I'm going to tell their manager that they touched my penis. Anyway, I head into the reception and walk right up to the concierge desk and am greeted by this guy who seems to have been expecting my arrival. This place is so fancy that they know each guest by name and apparently have a room ready for me booked under a false alias. This information was almost certainly in the mission brief that I did not read because I'm not a nerd. I'm about to be shown to my room when suddenly one of my targets, Ken Morgan, arrives and queries with the staff as to when his room will be ready. Apparently he is staying in the penthouse queen suite but it's currently being cleaned which he is getting impatient about. It's also quite obvious why this Ken Morgan guy is visiting Thailand and trust me, it's not to ride the elephants. So there are two certainties in this world. One, that most people are dehydrated and don't even realize. And two, any middle-aged man visiting Thailand by themselves is there to bang ladyboys. Anyway, I obviously can't eliminate him in the lobby with all these people around, so I just follow the hotel staff member to my room. It's actually a really nice room too. It's got some classy furniture, an elegant bathroom, and even a writing desk looking out over the lake. I steal the gold-plated letter opener to sell on eBay later. You'd think being an international assassin would pay well, but surprisingly, I earn a fraction more than the minimum wage. I head out onto the balcony and notice there is a way to climb up to the level above. The one bit of information I did retain from the mission briefing was that my rock star target, Jordan Cross, has booked out the top level of the hotel for him and his band. I jump through the window and see a couple of hotel staff members cleaning the room. I look around further, but there are guards blocking most entrances, so I will need to get a disguise to move around this area more freely. I throw my fish to distract one of the cleaners. I knew that it was a stroke of genius bringing that fish. He goes to check out what the noise was and then I proceed to throw my letter opener into his head. The doors close at the wrong time but fortunately it all implausibly works out. I steal his outfit but it's risky leaving this body here with the other cleaner so close so I wait for an opportunity and quickly choke her out. I do my best to hide the bodies but there really isn't a good place to dump them so I mean yeah. Let's just hope no one walks past I guess. With my new disguise, I head upstairs to try and find Jordan Cross. I look around and there is a pleasant rooftop garden, a lot of empty rooms. In fact, this entire level of the hotel is basically empty except for this one weird guy. And I discover that this one weird guy is Jordan Cross's stalker who is trying to spy on him across to the other side of the hotel. It becomes immediately apparent that I am in completely the wrong building. Basically, I'm here and Jordan Cross is here. Well, well played, Pelican, you dumb mother f Anyway, at least I have the disguise. I sprint back down to the bottom level and prepare to now navigate my way to the top of the other wing of the hotel. On my way, I stumble across the hotel offices and find a report which states a bug exterminator is fumigating the hotel. 
Interesting. I also find this guy meditating in the gardens. He's probably the kind of guy who gets up at 5am and does yoga and then writes in his gay little journal and then has a nice cold shower and then tells everyone at the office all about his morning routine while explaining how yogurt is actually bad for you. What a wanker. I then run past a seemingly generic van. But you see, as a professional hitman, I pick up on the small insignificant details such as the cockroach on the roof, which tells me that this is actually the bug exterminator's van. I finally get back to the lobby and find Ken Morgan angrily snooping around again. As I get closer to him, I realize I can actually talk to him and so of course I do this. Agent 47 is just like, Hey boss, your room's ready. And Ken's just like, okay then, take me to my suite, you authentic Thai housekeeper, I'll follow you. And so he follows me, which is excellent news. I proceed to take him to the top level of the building I was just in. This is a bit of a guess, but I sure hope I'm right because he might get suspicious if it's not his room. We arrive at the penthouse and he says that he needs to inspect the premises to make sure it's up to his standards. He spots a stain on the ground and tells me to mop it up. You mother no one tells me to mop up anything. Well, except for my girlfriend who tells me to mop up sometimes. And also I guess my old boss when I worked as a bartender, he told me to mop up a lot. And actually when I was younger, my mum told me to mop up too. Look, okay, I guess several people have told me to mop up, but you will be the last Mr. Ladyboy banger. As you can see, I chose to stay in character and also clean a desk. He also gets me to pick up two soda cans off the ground. We then head into the bar bathroom and he wants me to clean the bench top. But you know what, you blue suited bastard, I'll clean up your face with this soda can. I throw it at his face, knocking him unconscious. His security guard has the awareness of a blind thought and so I throw the other soda can at his face, knocking him out as well. I then pull out my chrome pistol and put a bullet in each of their heads. Looks like I mopped up after all. I mopped both of you up. Jesus Christ, my taunts after I eliminate targets are still really bad, but the important thing here is that Ken's dead, it's time to find Jordan Cross. As I am leaving the penthouse, I notice one of the guards has put a body in a body bag and is dragging it somewhere. Honestly, I've been very reckless this mission and have basically turned this hotel into a morgue, so it's not surprising bodies are starting to be found. I'm not sure if this guard has reported the incident yet, but I decide to take him down as I don't really want everyone knowing that there is a killer on the loose. Better to be safe than sorry. Unfortunately, some other nearby guards hear the commotion and I am forced to make a reflex play and swiftly take them down with two headshots. I take one of the guards outfits and do my best to hide the bodies. Boy, that escalated quickly, but no point crying over spilt milk. I make my way across the raised walkway into the other wing of the hotel. Now this looks more like where a rock star is staying. The first thing I see is two guys passed out on the floor. See kids, this is what happens when you take heroin and crack. The lesson here is to just take one or the other, don't mix them. I'm unable to take the staircase as the security disguise doesn't have access to the upper levels. The good news is that this wing of the hotel is perfectly symmetrical to the other side and so I just find one of the balconies and climb up exactly like I did earlier. This level of the hotel is crawling with band members, music technicians and private security. I find two security guards completely unaware in an isolated office. I'll need one of those disguises and so I whip out my silenced pistol and dispose of the first guard. I decide to wait a moment to allow the second guy to look into my eyes before I take him down too. I did this to ensure that the last thing he saw was my menacing face. Well I mean it would be menacing if I didn't have this stupid little spiky hat on. I look like a guard from Willy Wonka's bloody chocolate factory. Anyway, I upgrade disguises and do try and sort of hide the bodies, but look, it's far from a perfect crime. On a positive note though, I find a baseball bat, which is pretty cool. I check out what Jordan Cross has done to the hotel and basically he's turned it into a recording studio. Unfortunately, there are so many people around that know I'm not part of the security detail and so I have to be careful. I make my way upstairs and spot Jordan Cross in the outdoor garden. He is surrounded by members of his ridiculously large entourage. I'm going to need to formulate a cunning plan to pull this hit off. I decide to sniff around some of the band members' hotel rooms. I look around and there is nothing of real use to me here. There's some guitars and it's pretty trashed, but then I spot what I really need. 
a katana. Who needs a baseball bat when you have a goddamn sword? I exit the room, but I'll be honest, I'm worried that this katana is not sharp, and so I decide to set up a little social experiment. So what I do is I go into one of the hotel rooms and grab a radio from the table. I place the radio on the floor and turn it on. I then open the door of the room so one of the guards hears the radio and investigates. When he enters, I close the door behind him and proceed to stab the katana into his head, thus proving the katana is sharp. You might be thinking, how the heck was that a social experiment? You just stabbed a guy with a sword. Anyway, I continue looking around. I find a bathroom with one of the biggest bathtubs I have ever seen. I guess this is where Amy Schumer cleans herself. I can't find any real leads though, but then I remember about the bug exterminator contract I read in the hotel's staff office. It basically said that this entire wing of the hotel will need to be fumigated and that the pest inspector will tell the hotel manager to evacuate the wing when he is ready. I head back towards the bug van, but on my way spot some yellow sheeting and sure enough the pest inspector has made his way inside and has started work. I follow him around for a while, but his little buddy is always right there watching him. Eventually, he makes his way into a storage room and inspects a vent. Of course, the hotel staff member stays right with him. I wait for them to leave and then investigate the vent myself. It says that I can pollute the ventilation system, but that I will need insecticide. I like where this is going. I check around for insecticide, but there's none here, so it might be back at the van. I head back there, but then realize there's actually two of these Bane wannabes. I wait for him to move away, and sure enough, I find Find the poison and so I steal it without him noticing. It's great that he didn't notice I stole the poison, but all these people sure did and they begin to panic which means they plan to raise the alarm. With no other options, I just run away. My only advantage is that I will be a difficult person to describe to the guards, as my only distinct characteristics are that I am white as a ghost, bald, have a barcode on my head, and have a katana. I should be sweet. I get back to the vent, but decide not to pollute the ventilation system yet, as I don't know what the consequences will be. After a bit of investigating, I take an educated guess and assume it will probably poison the main lobby of the hotel. I need to get my a pest inspector disguise and you know what that means. I channel my inner samurai and give these two dudes a little stabbing and then take the pest inspector disguise. Unfortunately, I will have to ditch the katana as people will be too suspicious if I have one dressed like this. This is very sad. I imagine this is what divorce feels like when deep down you still love each other. Time to find the hotel manager. I look around but it doesn't take long at all before I find her floating around the reception area. I'm like, yo girl, I'm ready to fumigate your bugs if you know what I mean. She's like, yeah, no worries. I'll tell the band to vacate the building, but she also says to be more discreet as I am scaring the guests. And look, honestly, that's a fair call. She's trying to run a classy establishment and I'm wandering around with a gas mask and a suit that says bug swat on it. Not exactly a good impression for the hotel guests. I'm also murdering everyone, which again, not a great look for the hotel. Anyway, she makes the call and I prepare for the final phase of the plan. I arrive at the vent and so does Jordan Cross. Look at him sitting there all smug. I just have to hope that poisoning this ventilation system will poison the main lobby and not the room he was just in or something. I pour the insecticide into the vent and run over to check on him. Sure enough, he is coughing and splattering like a wasted white girl at a house party who decided it was the perfect time to hit her first blunt. I kind of feel bad that I've just poisoned an entire lobby of innocent people. I run outside and realize that everyone is unconscious and not dead, which is good news. But it means I'll have to quickly finish off Jordan before security arrives. He doesn't put up much of a fight and with both targets down, it's time to get out of here. I run to the reception area to escape, but the guards have already locked down the main entrance to the hotel. This is no problem as I just use the underground tunnels and proceed to make my way to the docks. Mission complete. There was definitely some collateral damage, but you know how the old saying goes. If at first you don't succeed, stab the pest inspector with a katana and steal his identity and then fumigate your problems. Thanks for watching you legends and a massive thank you to my patrons for their ongoing and generous support. You guys are absolutely legendary. Until next time and as always, stay classy.